many, okay, how many people here have published a, an app or a game on the iOS store or the Play Store already? One. How many want to publish? Yeah, okay, how many want to publish? How many are developing a game or app right now? Okay, there's a lot more there. Okay, so everyone else just wants to know about the app ecosystem, is that right? Okay, okay. So, so how many of you guys think that, um, you know, publishing an app or a game is simply develop the app, coding, a bit of UX, publish it on the store, and that's it. And wish, wish you know, all the best to try to get successful. <laughs> is, is that pretty much the understanding? Yes? Okay. Um, okay, so, so my name is David In. Uh, I'm, based in uh, I'm based in Singapore. I take care of Google Play business development for Singapore, Indonesia, and Australia. My main focus is working with uh, local developers in these three countries and growing their business on Google Play. Okay, so um, working with every single one of you, I do hope in the future that one of the best games or apps in the world comes from this country. Because as Pikesh has mentioned, the opportunity in Indonesia is massive. Okay, and um, I really want to work and grow this ecosystem with all of you to make that happen. Okay. <laughs> I broke the mic. Okay, so before I start, um, Indonesia market itself, um, how many of you guys have heard of Summoner's War? Summoner's War. Yes? Um, Marvel Future Fight? Clash of Kings? Clash of Kings? <laughs> okay, so. What you, guys don't, what you guys don't know is there are not that many local Indonesian developers that are very successful in Indonesia itself, okay? And I want to change that picture, okay? Two of my biggest local Indonesian partners, okay, based in Jakarta, um, who has heard of Alegrim? Alegrim. No? Okay, Minimo Studios? Oh, you have, huh? Okay, so Minimo Studios are my second largest partner from Jakarta, about 95% of their revenues come outside of Indonesia. It comes from the US and Europe. Elegrim has an app called the Billionaire Game. The most successful developer in Indonesia, 95% of their revenues come from outside of Indonesia. Okay, so the market in Indonesia is very, very big, but also do think globally. Okay, so let's start. Um, what I, want to do, what I want to do here is to talk about the size of the Android and the Play opportunity. I then want to jump into uh, pricing, pricing best practices in terms of localized pricing. Then the last section which is quite important is um, some of the tools or best practices available on Google Play to help you guys grow your business, pub publish your game and app successfully. Okay. And um, the key here for me is to go through my presentation relatively quickly, and I want to open the floor for questions because I think that's a lot more valuable. You know, any sort of questions that you guys have, you can you can ask me. Okay, so as Pikesh mentioned, Android is huge, it's massive, it's growing rapidly. Okay, we have over 1.4 billion Android devices. Okay, by the end of today, we would have activated one and a half million Android devices. We have over 400 plus handset manufacturers developing for Android. So we're talking Huawei, LG, Mi, all those handset manufacturers, okay? We've got over 500 plus operator partnerships. What this means is that users who download your game or app and want to buy something in the game or app can use your operator bill. So it's called direct carrier billing. In Indonesia itself, uh, Google Play is in partnership already with Telkomsel, Indosat, Excel, and Axis. Covers 95% of Indonesia, so you can buy game, you can buy in-app items using your carrier bill. Okay. Um, so Google Play itself, over 1 billion monthly active users. Okay. We we there were over 50 billion downloads that happened two years ago. That number has increased rapidly since then. There's over 190 countries where you can distribute your game, and over 130 where you can sell your Apple game. Okay, so the so the, the, the momentum is massive. The market sizing is huge. Um, 
payment options, so monetization is extremely important for all game and app developers, not just building the, the game or app, but actually making money from it. So these are the payment options that are available. We've got 61 new forms of payments in over 32 markets, okay? Over 400 million users have access to new forms of payment, okay? We've got carrier billing in 38 countries, so paying for your in-app items using your carrier bill. We've got Google Play gift cards in 30 countries, and we've got PayPal ability in 21 countries itself. So we have the, the, the market, and not only do we have the market, we want to support you guys in those markets with forms of payment, okay? As Mikesh mentioned as well, um, last year we paid out $7 billion to developers, okay? So at the end of the day, when you guys make money, we make money, okay? We, we give you guys 70% of every dollar, and we keep 30%. Okay. Um, now in terms of monetization, there are a few ways of monetizing. My main focus is obviously in-app purchases and paper downloads. That's, that's my focus for Google Play itself. But obviously in supporting Google Play itself, we also have ads, so AdMob, okay? And my colleague Inga will be speaking later on today on AdMob. So we've got ads for monetizing as well. We've got subscription, you can pay by the month with subscriptions as well. And also, obviously, as I mentioned, paid app and in-app purchases is very key for Google Play revenue itself. So moving on um, in terms of best practices, let me cover first pricing best practices, okay? And specifically, local pricing preferences. Okay, it's not a, it's not a matter of simply developing the app or the game, publishing it on, on your, you know, making a develop console, publishing it, and whatever price is whatever price. What you need to consider is localized pricing. In this particular example in Japan, we had over two, two times sales lift for Minecraft because of very precise local pricing in the Japanese market, okay? Um, as Bikesh mentioned before, sub-dollar pricing. So this is absolutely critical in our markets in Southeast Asia and emerging markets. We have gone below 99 cents US in a lot of these markets. In Indonesia itself, we're down to 3,000 rupiah, which is like less than 30 cents US as the minimum price. You see all the emerging markets in Southeast Asia, except Singapore, we've gone below a dollar. So this, together with direct carrier billing, okay? If you're a telecom cell user, you now have access to sub dollar pricing for developers that adopt sub dollar pricing, and you can pay for your in-app items using your telecom cell bill. Okay, so the monetization opportunity is massive because the forms of payment is there, the forms of payments are there, as well as the sub-dollar pricing. Um, as you can see, locally relevant payment methods convert more users to buyers all around the world. Okay, we've got examples here in Germany where there were buyer growth of 70% because of locally relevant. We've got 100% growth in Russia, 80% growth in, in Hong Kong. 38% growth in, in international sales uh, for Germany. So this is all about localized pricing. It's all about increased forms of payments um, and, and so on. So, so now I want to cover about Google Play best practices. So what tools are available to developers to, to succeed in building an app, building a great app or game and publishing that? So it's not a simply a matter of I'm one of the best software engineers in Binance University. I'm going to develop a game, and it's going to take off, and I'm going to make millions of dollars. Um, we are, I'm here to help you guys get to that. And these are the best practices available for free, completely for free, to help you guys and guide you guys to make very, very good quality games and apps. So the first one is all about quality. Now, user review ratings, okay? The, this is extremely important for any Apple game developer. Whenever you publish your game or app and you get one star reviews or two star reviews, don't ignore them, respond to them, okay? Respond to each and every single one of them and say, is this a bug, pro is this a bug fixing problem? Is this a carrier problem? Is this a game problem? Is your game crashing and so on? Work with, your, work with your users on increasing your star ratings because this is absolutely critical in terms of quality. And as you can see, highly rated apps generate a lot more sales, jumping from 
two to three stars to three to four stars increases your sales by nine times. Okay, going from three to four stars to four to five stars increasing your sales by four times as well. So user review ratings and quality go hand in hand. Absolutely critical to ensure that your quality is, is there, user review ratings are as high as possible. Um, the good thing, the good news is that a lot of quality issues are controllable. Okay, so it's not as if, or oh, I'm doing anything about it, right? As you can see here, 56% of the worst reviews are due to quality reviews, but at over 80% of users will not open the app again. Okay, but as you can see here, crashes and bugs are, 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 are fixable. Slow network, well, laggy client and other, there are things that you can actually fix, which is great, okay? What is quality, as I mentioned? Features that users love. It's a beautiful design, UX and user interface. Uh, it's reliable and great performance, okay? And it's got also the latest Android features that are useful to developers as well as users itself. As I said, quality is a process. Um, you don't just do it once and forget about it. You have to keep on looking at it, reiterating, looking at your user reviews. What can you do? So the users might, you know, your users might complain about, you know, uh, not relevant ads or adult related content on ads. Then you need to fix that. You know, um, so it's it's a it's a continuous process. So you design, you develop, you distribute, and then you reiterate all all the way through all the time. Um, material design is extremely important, mainly for app developers, not game developers. Okay, so material design is is all about a best practice around design principles that Google Play has come up with to 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 help. Uh, game developers, sorry, to help app developers improve user experience and user interface, okay? Um, it's something that is highly recommended. It's not mandatory, but it's super highly recommended by Google Play for app developers. So an app developer called Trello increased their activity sessions by 42% because of material design, okay? Um, B and H, another app developer, increased in-app orders by, by five times itself. So a lot of the a lot of the top um, app partners I'm taking care of in Indonesia, like Traveloka, is working on material design. All these guys are working on material design, and it's proven that um, user retention, increased activity sessions, all result in that. Okay. Um, this is a link, a website link, for the very best material design apps in the world that we showcase to publicly to everyone. So that app developers can be inspired and, and aim for this sort of design on, on, on their apps. Okay. Okay. The next the next best practice or, or tool that I want to share with you is extremely important for I think the majority the majority of this room that are looking at developing a game or an app. Okay. Many people tell me, oh David, you know when I develop a game, I don't know whether the users will like it or not. You know, how do I know whether the users will like it? Once I spend all this money, I publish the app, and then I get all these one-star ratings, and then I'm in big trouble, okay? This is exactly how to avoid that, okay? This is called beta testing and stage rollouts. So in summary, we guide you all the way through alpha beta testing and stage rollouts. So when your app or game is like, let's say, 50% completed or 40% completed, in the alpha stage, you can test it with real life users. Okay? So it's effectively going live and publishing live, but with a very small user group, so that you can test exactly what are your users telling you. So the alpha stage, the beta stage might be more when your app or game has been more developed. Beta stage can be open beta or closed beta. Closed beta means you only select, let's say, 50 users. Open beta, you can you can anyone that has your your link, they can test your your, your Apple game, and then you've got the stage rollout and the full or rollout itself. So this this best practice is extremely critical for game and app developers to really get a good sense that once you publish on Google Play Store and you go to the world, you are fairly confident that you know that you've got the best Apple game that you can have based on real life user feedback throughout the whole process. So as I mentioned, beta options, you've got open beta and closed beta. Um, 
open beta, any user can click and they can join your, your, your beta testing. Closed beta, only specific closed user groups can join your, your, your beta testing itself. Okay? So once again, extremely important. Stage rollout, as I mentioned, you can roll out your, your Apple game to a percentage of your user base. Um, users can be selected randomly, you can, you can view it publicly, and users can leave reviews as well. Okay? Obviously, um, you know, in terms of, it uh, doesn't matter how good your app is, if no one downloads it, uh, what we have here is um, the store listing of, of the particular app, okay? What is important here is we also have another best practice called store listing experiments, okay? So unlike alpha beta testing and stage rollout, that is testing the actual APK itself, the actual physical APK file. This is store listing experiment, it's testing to your users the look and feel of your store listing. You can test that. You can test the icons on your store. You can test your logo. You can test, you can test your images. And also, should your store listing be in Bahasa? Should it be in English? Should it be in Vietnamese? Is it more popular in Japanese, in the Japan market? These are all the tests that is, that are, that is available to, to developers to utilize. Okay? So this thing with experiments, as I mentioned. So this developer congregate uh, basically did this store listing experiment, and as a result, its installs increased by 45%. Okay. Rovio used Rovio used store listing experiments. So te they tested all these icons. Okay, all with, with different uh, results. Obviously, positive being very well received by their users. Okay. So as you can see. As you can see from the different icons, there's a lot of icons there, and this is the beauty of store listing experiment. You put as many icons you want up there, okay? And the final one that was the best was the top right. So 7.2% love the Optimus Prime head facing sort of downwards, okay? And it's not, I mean, to, for, for me, I actually like the, I like the 3.2% one. But store listing experiment is not about me. It's about users giving real life feedback on what is the best icon for your game. Okay, so another best practice available is we have what we call developer pages. So if you're a developer um, and you have a lot of different games and apps, such as Halfbrick Studios with Fruit Ninja, Jetpack Joyride, then you can develop a developer page. Think of it as a personal web page for developers to showcase their portfolio of games and apps. Okay, it's a very powerful tool as well, and it's another tool available for free for all developers. As I mentioned, uh, my colleague Inga will be talking a lot more about AdBob later on today. Um, but obviously, you know, especially in emerging markets, um, complementing in-app purchases with ads is a very powerful tool. Um, so using AdBot with Google, uh, they've got over a million advertisers, one of the biggest and best in the world. We've got over 650,000 uh, apps using AdBot. One billion was paid out in the last couple of years. Uh, it, it's got a mediation platform, so it's basically plugged into all the major ad networks. So your fill rates are, are, are pretty high. Uh, ECPMs and fill rates are one of the best in the industries. So, so basically to, to recap here, uh, so I, I spoke about the Android opportunity in terms of the market size and what the opportunity was in terms of users, in terms of devices, in terms of forms of payments, uh, sub dollar pricing, direct carry billing, and so on. So, so that's all there, the opportunity is massive. Second one I spoke about was localized pricing across markets. Now this is very critical and quite important as well. And finally, Best practices, so what best practices and tools are available to all of the game and app developers to help you guys succeed on Google Play. Okay, so that's my job in helping you guys succeed and hopefully make a lot of money on Google Play. And these are the tools that are available to all of you. Okay, now, one last thing. We're hosting a developer Google for mobile in Jakarta in two weeks time. This is open to everyone in this room. You can, you can sign up, you can still sign up. We have already, we already have 
1,100 developers coming. All of you guys are invited. It's at the Sheraton Gandaria City. Okay. Uh, take note of it. Uh, in this in this event particularly, um, my biggest partner, uh, the CEO and founder of Halfbrick Studios, Fruit Ninja, will be there. He will be the keynote speaker. Together with um, some of my top Indonesian partners, uh, Touch Ten, Touch Ten Studios, Touch Ten Games, uh, Innovidia Picnics, and Minimal Studios will be there. So all of you guys are invited. It's free. So just register for free. If you can't remember the the URL, just look for Google for Mobile Indonesia. It's the number one result. Okay. Um, that's it for me. But before I go, I wanted to open the floor up to to any sort of questions or any questions that anyone had. No questions at all? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Is there any places for uh, know the Google application more for beginner, intermediate, and advanced in Jakarta? You mean classes? Class. Yeah. Okay. So, um, it's a good question. What we what we actually have is um, like it, within Google, we have kind of um, I, I take care of the very top <coughs> partners, the developers, and then we have another team that takes care of. Uh, the longer tail, the smaller developers, and they always have like uh, events and, and workshops throughout the year. Uh, have you heard of GDG? So GDG is a Google developer group, um, and what they do is they have a lot of sessions once every two three months to coach developers about what's new in Google, what's new in Google, what tools are available. Uh, so that's something to look out for. That's normally free and it's open to the public. We have events like obviously. This, this event is, is a very key event for, for you to attend if you want. It's a whole day event. We talk about uh, Google Play, AdMob, policy, global, technical, coding, everything. So it's a whole day session. We've got like three tracks, three classes in there as well. So do, do try to attend. Yeah. Any questions? Any other questions? Okay, before I go with you, nothing else? Okay, I'll just have to take the last question here then. Uh, can Google collaborate with university? Uh, because the fresh graduate cannot, doesn't know the Google application. They usually know about PHP, know Java, but there is no uh, basic knowledge about Google application. I think it's better to. Uh, get knowledge with, uh, with so, so that's a good question. We have I have another team that is uh, that takes care of uh, like it's called uh, developer relations team, the technical team, and they work closely with universities. And they have uh, what is it called? There is an online course. Um, let Let me if you have your business card, let me uh, have it, and then I'll let the other team get back to you. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for me. If there are no questions, um, oh, one over there. Do you need the mic? Uh, no need, actually. <laughs> I just want to ask, um, how reliable is the rating for each app, since you said that the rating is very um, essential. And I also know that um, lots of the apps downloader doesn't uh, rate the apps. So I actually two questions, how reliable and how to make sure that all the down apps downloader rates the app. Thank you. So it's a good question. Um, from, from our perspective, um, the, the, the user review ratings are, are pretty reliable, but that is also important. I mean, obviously, if it's a new game and you only have 50 reviews, then it's kind of, well, okay. But um, once you have over like, I don't know, 10,000 or 20,000 reviews, and even the top quality apps, it is it is extremely reliable in that sense. And I do encourage that developers have to reply to those user review ratings itself. Um, I do have developers sometimes that email me and say, oh David, uh, there seems to be something suspicious about the user review ratings. Sometimes they say, my competitors are the ones giving bad user review ratings. In that particular case, what I do is, um, 
I, I flag that internally, and, and we have a team that investigates that. But overall, I would say 90% of the time, it's, it's pretty reliable. Um, and the, the second question, what was the second question? How to make the most downloader to rate the app. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's, we, don't force, we don't force users to rate. Um, and, and right now, you know, I, I can't, if we have 1 billion downloads but only 100 reviews, it's kind of, well, if that's what the users want to do, I'm not going to force them to rate something that, you know, in that sense. We, we like to keep it open and free. If you want to rate it, good. If not, um, it, it's okay. But the most important thing is, as a game or app developer, if you have one star, two star, three star, or four is okay, but one, two, three stars, reply to them. Okay? I know it's hard if you have one star with no comment. You can't do anything. Right? But if you have one star and say, your game crashes on level four, level four, I tried to buy an in-app purchase and it didn't go through, okay, um, then that's something you can reply to. It's very important to do that. And um, also, one more thing is, if you look at the Indonesian Google Play Store, you look at the top games and apps, the user review ratings are very high. Um, and they're very, they're quite reliable and very accurate in that sense. Yeah. Any other questions? Ah, okay. Uh, actually, I have two questions. Sure. Uh, the first one regarding to the defense with Google.com. Yeah. It says that we have we need uh, some sort of app we have made by ourselves. Yes. If we don't have it right now. Okay, so, <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the requirement is that you need to have publish an app because like we have 1,100 confirmed, but we, we got like 2,000 applications. We want to make sure that at least you have a, a game or an app published already so that, it, 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 I mean, it's more valuable in that sense, and that's kind of our cutoff. Um, have you got one? Are you developing one? or? Um, to do one. Is it? <laughs> How, is it nearly finished or is it 80%? No, it's, it will start in the middle of this year. Okay, okay. Maybe after this, I'll give you my business card. Uh, let me take a look at the app. No, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not that bad. Not it's that, is not it a beta version? No, it's still like a concept. Oh, it's still concept? Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, th this one is more, <laughs> the, the minimum requirement is you, you at least have a game or an app published already. Oh, no. yeah. And a second question, what's the best uh, practice to generate the, uh, to tell people that hey this is my app please don't know but please try it so that's a that's a great question it's a lot of question it, it's a very common question among developers right so if you forget about paying for user acquisition let's say you forget about that and say that you know you want to look at free user acquisition there's a couple of things to look at so obviously um, before you even tell your friends or, or whatever about your game or app, you have to make sure that your game or app is, is, is very, very good. Okay? And the way to make sure that your game or app is very, very good is to follow the best practices. Okay? Um, the, the best practices are exactly there to guide you to make the best quality game and app. Once you've made the best quality game and app, in terms of how do you then um, get people to know about it, there are a few ways. The first way is um, you know social media for free, but Facebook groups, uh, Facebook groups, Twitter, LinkedIn. I know in Indonesia there is a there is a Bandung game developer Facebook group. Uh, there's also Android partnerships at Android group where there's a lot of thousands and thousands of developers and they're willing to test test on that. Okay. Um, there's also the the other option as well as. Um, Attending events like this, all right, or even Tech in Asia events where you Tech in Asia events, for example, there you can showcase your your game or app to the to the community. Um, there's a lot of events in Indonesia in Bandung, uh, that sort of stuff. So talk a lot about it, but make sure your game or app is really great. And for that to happen, the uh, A/B testing, A/B testing that I talked about is very very important. 
because that one there is will help you talk to about 50 users. What is the feedback then? And finally, if your game and app has got quite a lot of downloads, uh, your user review ratings are very high, I'm willing to have a look at it to try to feature it on new and updated games globally. But before you get there, before I can consider that, I need to see the, the downloads and also the user review ratings itself. Yeah. Have I, have we, have we, any more questions, guys? Still okay? okay? One more from this side. Very quiet over this side. Okay, so I, I think, um, what about talking about some of your concepts? Like, do you, are you comfortable to share about the concept or you're not? No, okay. Who, is anyone, anyone want to talk about the concept? I can, I can have a quick chat about it. I know a lot of you guys have been published on Google Play. What sort of ideas you guys wanna you guys wanna share openly? Okay, here we go. Uh, so, uh, I just uh, my name is San. I from SanApps.com. Uh, we just launched uh, an application. It's about a uh, chatting application. Chatting. Yeah, chatting. Uh, it's mostly it will be like uh, WeChat because we also build uh, the application and we are trying to create. Uh, in order to get the application to work uh, on top, uh, I mean, we get a platform, platform so other application can work with us and can serve uh, any uh, other services. So basically, we are not just uh, only a chatting application, but we are a uh, community application. So we are welcome to if, uh, if other uh, application uh, can talk with us. I think I think that's a it's a great idea. Are you focusing only on Indonesia or globally? Uh, we are focusing on Indonesia. Only on Indonesia itself. And everything is localized in Bahasa? Uh, in Bahasa. Okay. And um, the, the, the chat application itself, um, what sort of other applications do you, are you thinking of putting onto or, or connecting to your app itself? Is it like you want to connect e commerce apps or maybe dining apps or food apps? Or? Uh, right now we are connecting with uh, the, uh, the and Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a good idea. It's definitely Are you nearly done? Is it published already? It's already published. Oh, so you can attend. <laughs> <laughs> I already registered. Oh, you registered already. Okay, excellent, excellent. And, and we also will be in the Tech in Asia next month. Oh, yes, in, in Jakarta as well. Uh, in Singapore. Singapore. Oh, you're there. I'm also there. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. Good to hear. That's great. I mean, it's good to see all these ideas like coming out. I mean, that's, that's a, it, it's all about sharing as well. Any ideas or concepts anyone over there want to talk about or willing to share? I know the guy in yellow shirt is... is it? <laughs> no? No? Okay, how about this side? Any ideas you want to talk about? Concepts? Sharing? Here we go. So, we have a mobile speaker, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> How hard is it to get it on the Play Store? Like, okay, um, maybe if it's at a state where you can do an alpha, put it onto alpha beta testing, so open it up to maybe 50 users, so you can get it on the Play Store, and then just just let me know. Yeah, because the the requirement is that we need at least uh, an Apple game on the store, but your your app is quite advanced. Uh, just get it onto the beta testing channels invite 20 users or 50 users so that at least you have a your other place store in that sense. Yeah. But let me know. You, you can, you, I'll give you my business card. Then. Yeah. Um, so it's good to see all these like ideas coming out, right? Oh, hi, where are <laughs> So it's good to see all these ideas and this is what the future of Indonesia is all about, right? I mean, we're seeing great, great ideas coming out. 
uh, Indonesia market is massive, but also think about outside of Indonesia itself. Okay. Any last questions itself before I I can conclude here? <laughs> okay, last one, last one. Last one. Okay, uh, my friend has a uh, hardware uh, with Raspberry. He, he wants to talk with uh, Google application and uh, a mobile device with Google. Uh, is there any uh, training also with uh, Simon? He has Blackberry. Large 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 Blackberry. Thank you, David. Another round of applause, please. I think we learned a lot. Eh? Um, so the next one, uh, what we're going to talk about 